Hey, it's Mazzy, and let's talk traffic. The great band out of the UK, uh, a fusion of rock, folk rock, jazz, soul, blue-eyed soul a little bit. And we have to start with the Spencer Davis group because of Steve Winwood. Steve Winwood was, I think, 15, 14, 15 years old when he hooked up here. His brother, uh, Muff Winwood, also was in the band. And they came out of the gate with several hits. They're a Birmingham band, and their hits were Give Me Some Lovin', I'm a Man, Keep On Runnin', uh, a cover of the song Keep On Runnin'. But, of course, the song I'm a Man, uh, co-written uh, by Jimmy Miller and Steve Winwood, Jimmy Miller produced, who would later go on to produce uh, Traffic and the Rolling Stones and many other uh, great, great bands around this era in the, in the mid to late 60s into the 1970s. But this Greatest Hits is a, a good comp. It's an American comp, but just a great kind of white soul rock sound. Spencer Davis Group uh, was a fantastic band. Uh, Stevie Winwood would, would quit and start his own band, Traffic. His brother Muff would become uh, their manager and went into the business side of the music business. And then, um, of course, Spencer Davis really didn't last much longer after that. But the group Traffic has always been a, a favorite of mine and probably uh, the, the first song that I heard mainly on FM radio was uh, Mr. Fantasy. And I wanna start out with showing this really loose UK cover somewhat falling apart, uh, this version of it. But if you have a chance and if you're in the UK or see them in, this, uh, in America here, try to get their Pink Label Island copies. Fantastic records. Now, in the States, uh, all their records initially were on United Artists. Uh, the pressings are fine. They're not anywhere as near a good sounding or as just wonderfully silent in a way and pressed as these Island records at the time. Obviously, getting them now, sometimes they tend to be a little crunchy, but anytime you see a Pink Label Island record of any band, uh, they put out. Uh, I would highly recommend you try to grab it if you can, if it's reasonably priced. But this album, you have Chris Wood on flute and saxophone, reed instruments. You have Jim Capaldi, drums, percussion. Later, he would kind of get back from the drum set uh, when they went through their 70s, more uh, jazz fusion kind of uh, rock phase. And he would pull back and other drummers would come along. Uh, Dave Mason, who was in and out and in and out. I'll get to that a little bit. And of course, uh, Steve Winwood. But a fantastic, fantastic band. Uh, you know, came again in that psychedelic era, but they they did have a little of the, um, the folk rock scene happening. Again, not as pure uh, as groups like Fairport Convention, obviously not like Pentangle. Pentangle was really fused jazz and folk music. They're more rock and soulful uh, based here. In America, the initial record that came out on United Artist was called Heaven In Your Mind, a lyric uh, from one of the songs on here. Later, this would be changed once Mr. Fantasy was getting a lot of airplay, especially on FM radio in, in the States at the time. They changed uh, the, um, the title of this to Mr. Fantasy, Dear Mr. Fantasy. Uh, but this is a wonderful record. Some of the cuts, some of the tracks were changed from the American uh, to the um, UK version. You have Paper Sun, neo-psychedelic, pre-psychedelic, or right in that pocket of psychedelia pop music. Dealer is wonderful, wonderful a song on here that would later in the 70s be covered by Santana. Colored Rain, again. Uh, you can't deny the wonderful, soulful vocals of Stevie Winwood. What I really like about this period, and especially the first and second album, I love the inclusion of of Dave Mason. And to me, that is when the sound of traffic really gel for me. And it's my favorite period because they have so different directions of, of songwriting, of vocals. And I think it actually, it helps the band and it makes them more of a, of a full, a rounded UK band. It wasn't just a singular vision of, of really that Stevie 
uh, Steve Winwood vision that wanted to kind of bring the jazz and stuff. Steve and Chris um, Wood really, really had that kind of jazz love, and and whereas uh, Dave Mason wanted more the pop sound, more organic sound of it, and I think it really worked um, better. The song "Heaven Your Mind" is a wonderful kind of psychedelic pop song. Berkshire Poppies, Smiling Faces, uh, which uh, later uh, the band Blood, Sweat and Tears would include on their huge album on there too. So a lot of their songs were covered by other artists. Of course, Mr. Fantasy was recorded by several people, including the Grateful Dead and or Jerry Garcia at one point later on. This particular copy is a Sunday's mono copy. I kind of like the stereo versions of this, but the monos are great uh, too. But this is a just a wonderful, wonderful record. And the irony is Dave Mason is on this album, but this is the first time Dave Mason leaves the band and obviously only three members of the band, the whole entire quartet, less Dave Mason on the cover. So I just want to show this because it's kind of fun and very rare. This is called Traffic Reaping. Uh, this is another version of that first debut album, but this is a Canadian pressing with an entirely different cover. And all four members are included here, at least, and on the cover, which is great. Hold on My Shoe, another song that was on some versions and not other versions. But I, I just love uh, the psychedelia on that, especially with that young girl's voice. A giant albatross. I'm not going to even attempt to do the accent, but it just it's right in that great pocket of pop psychedelia. And then there's this version. This is an original American edition. And I had gotten rid of mine years ago uh, during the CD purge, uh, CD vinyl purge to CDs. And this is a copy that I acquired when my, uh, from my, the Coleman collection, my late friend's collection. And only when I was going through this listening, I listened to all these albums over the last week again from beginning to end, I noticed it's signed by Steve Winwood and it says to Coleman there. And it's also signed by Steve Winwood right there on the back. So um, it's cool that I have acquired my uh, late friend Coleman's copy autographed by Steve Winwood, and I don't know when he got it signed. It's possible. Uh, at one point, Coleman worked at Tower Records. It could have been on a gig uh, where they worked on other artists with his band, but I don't know. The self-titled record. This is my all-time favorite Traffic record, simply called Traffic. Dave Mason comes back again. To me, this is a perfect record. This is a perfect blend of that Dave Mason, acoustic-y, folky side of rock and roll going into the ethereal, jazzy rock side of Chris Wood and Steve Winwood and the great percussiveness of um, Jim Capaldi and his voice too. I love that you had three really great singers in this band. And to me, this is a perfect album. Uh, let me kind of reach over to this copy because this is my pink label copy. Again, seek out this. This is a fantastic sounding record. It, it, it's up at several notches from the American one. Again, the United Artist Pressings were okay. I mean, I, they lasted for me for many decades until I acquired a pink label. A uh, little noise on this, but um, it's what the music's about, and it's so good. I love that two of the great songs written by um, Dave Mason open each side. The first one is You Can All Join In. It's a catchy song. It... Some may say it's not as intricate as what uh, Steve Winwood and uh, Capaldi were writing together, but it's a brilliant opening and it's a very catchy, upbeat song. Maybe on, on the McCartney side of, uh, you know, all together now, but I think it's a, a better song than that. Side two opens up with Vagabond Virgin, co-written by Dave Mason and uh, Jim Capaldi. So you got a little of more of that island vibe uh, almost like Trinidad percussive uh, sounds of the of the islands in there. Uh, beautiful record, again, produced by Jimmy Miller. But again, Pearly Queen, fantastic song. Soulful rock, blue-eyed soul. Don't Be Sad is a be beautiful, again, a, a, just a wonderful acoustic-based uh, song. Who knows what tomorrow knows again. But it ends up on side one with what the song is probably Dave Mason's most famous for and that is feeling all right. And 
covered by Delaney and Bonnie. Obviously, he would do it uh, to this day in his career, covered by a lot of people. Just a great rock and roll. It's probably the mo most soulful song that um, Dave Mason has ever written that I can recall, but I love how that ends up. So Dave Mason, I think, has five of the songs on this album. Or, uh, I believe he does. But also when you go into side two, there's a great Winwood Capaldi song, which has this beautiful, uh, just spacey flute opening up, very kind of haunting, and it's called 40,000 Headmen. I love, love that. But uh, Crying to Be Heard is another great Dave Mason song. So every song on this is killer. This is a perfect album, one of my all-time favorite albums, and this is the self-titled album. Dave Mason kept leaving. D didn't want to like the direction or wanted to go in a totally different direction. And that's what an artist does, which is really too bad because I like that, that combination of Dave Mason, Jim Capaldi, Steve Winwood, and Chris Wood. What a great, great band. You got Last Exit here. This is sort of the final record that they owed the label at the time. Again, this is on Island, and this is yet another pink label copy. What this is, this is basically side one are loose sig uh, singles. Singles that would be on some copies of the first album, some singles, some B-sides. You got Medicated Goo, which I love that. And Winwood co-written with the producer, uh, Jimmy Miller. You got Shanghai Noodle Factory, Winwood, Capaldi, and Wood. Great, f I love that song. Just for you, Dave Mason, something's gotta hold my toe. Winwood, Mason, and Miller. One of the few songs that uh, Mason and uh, Winwood would write together, co-write. Side two is two songs only, live uh, from the Fillmore. You have Blind Men and you have Feeling Good. And Feeling Good is is the song that was, I believe that's the song that was a pretty big and signature song of Nina Simone's. But these are really, that's a 10, 11 minute song and a seven minute song. So you got these wonderful kind of jams, extended solos, which they would do on and on, uh, some to the detriment of some critics that didn't like their meandering and uh, as they got into uh, their 70s jazz fusion thing. And here's the American version of Last Exit with that logo I was talking about that would pop up on subsequent traffic records. So I'm gonna kind of take a little offshoot here and show several solo albums before I continue as they reformed again. Of course, the band breaks up, Everyone's on their own. Steve Winwood does the super band Blind Faith with Rick Gretsch, Ginger Baker, and Eric Clapton. One-off record, Burn Brightly, but a fantastic record. It came out initially in both the US and the UK with these covers. I show this, you know, sometimes this is controversial today, of the young woman uh, naked cover, but this is, again, another perfect album. Dave Mason does what would be a perfect solo album, and I think he never really did anything as good as this. Once he, what, later after signing to Blue Thumb here, did several albums on that. There's a live album called Headmaker. He did an interesting, not great, but there's some interesting tracks with Mama Cass, a duet with Mama Cass, an entire album. But this alone together, when this came out, it got a lot of, um, all my friends bought this record. And part of the reason, first of all, the music was great. And it, it had this amazing trifold cover. It was it 70, 1970, I believe this came out? 70 or 71. And of course, it's my copy. And for whatever reason, I must have brought this somewhere because I realized I have about 25 albums or so from 1970 and 71 that I wrote my name on. Uh, but Only You Know and I Know, another song that um, Delaney and Bonnie would, would uh, cover. Dave Mason went on the road with Eric Clapton, Delaney and Bonnie. George Harrison would pop in. He was part of that circuit. Uh, love, Delaney and Bonnie. Can't stop worrying, can't stop loving. Wait on you. Shouldn't have took more than you gave. He's a great songwriter here. He's at his peak here. And I wish this could have lasted because even when he did stuff when he went to Columbia, it's just... There would be like three or four or five great songs and then a lot of stuff that just, I don't know, for some reason, at least for me, it didn't uh, click. World of Changes, Sad and Deep as You, Enunciate Maslow. Just a song and 
Look at You, Look at Me, despite the music. This is the first record I ever remember that was a marbleized pressing in 1970. Look at this. So everyone looks for this record. I don't think it really goes for a lot because there are a lot of them pressed. But this is the original way it came out. Also came out in black as well. But in those days, there was no hype stickers for choice. I think the first pressing or two was a marbleized version. I don't know all the details, but um, wonderful record. Now, this is a record that doesn't get a lot of love. And, and Jim Capaldi did several albums on Island Records. I know he did one called Whale Meat Again, but I certainly love this record, Oh How We Danced. And Oh How We Danced uh, opens up with a wonderful song called Eve which is a great, great song. This has the Muscle Show, uh, the Muscle Show musicians on it, the rhythm section, Barry Beckett, David Hood. This is a fantastic band and a wonderful kind of soulful rock record. Highly recommend this. Uh, he has a song on here, it closes out with the anniversary song and it's a song made famous in the 1920s by Al Jolson. But this is a great record. It's a great sounding record. Don't be a hero here. Uh, my original copy, uh, you know, I would love to, you know, see if this could be improved on at this point, because I've had this record forever. I don't think it was a huge hit, but it did get some radio play. But Jim Capaldi, Oh How We Danced, a fantastic record. Now, Steve Winwood, obviously, this came out. Winwood album, fantastic comp. If you see this graphic, because it has uh, songs from the beginning from Spencer Davis. It has songs, uh, including I'm a Man, Keep on running, give me some lovin'. Then there's obviously songs from Traffic, Colored Rain, Paper Sun, Heaven is in Your Mind. You got Mr. Fantasy, you got Smiling Faces and Dealer, you got um, Vagabond Virgin. So you got Dave Mason's song on here, yet uh, it's part of Traffic. Then you have several songs also on here uh, from Blind Faith. But this is a fantastic uh, comp, introduction, book, history. You know, having a history of an artist so young, I don't think he was, what, barely 21, 22 uh, by this point when he gets his whole collaboration. And of course, just to sh sh throw one in here, the MTV years. And here's one of them. This is back in the high life. Huge MTV artist, very soul pop, huge hits, a number of records. So, you know, he really kind of found his own as a solo singer after several years of not really doing much. Uh, with this record. So uh, let's get back to the band now. John Barleycorn Must Die. This is when the band comes back as a trio. And part of this record has a really folk rock atmosphere. Obviously, the cover uh, song, traditional English folk song, it's sort of the centerpiece of this album, six minutes and 20 seconds. Acoustic guitar opening. Again, you got Chris Wood on flute and reeds, and you have the great percussion and uh, vocals also of... Um, of Jim Capaldi, but this is a fantastic album. Opens up with a really strong instrumental called Glad, that, that's wonderful. Freedom Rider, Empty Pages. Um, this is a wonderful record. And of course, there's uh, Maslow's Obligatory. Is it pink? This one isn't pink, because this is later. Yeah, this is the later uh, island here. But this is a British copy. But the American uh, was a gatefold. kind of infrared film, a la Jimi Hendrix and Donovan at the time. And you got um, a single sleeve, at least on my copy on Island Records. You can't count Dave Mason out. He came back and the band reforms again, yet again, and does a, a series of, I think, six shows only. And um, this wasn't billed as Traffic, but this was kind of an interesting uh, live album called Welcome to the Canteen. And it's not billed as a Traffic album even though it does have uh, their logo on the back. It's Steve Winwood, Jim Capaldi, Dave Mason, Chris Wood, Rick Gretsch uh, from Blind Faith, Rebop Kwakuba joins on percussion and adds a, a, an interesting sound that, that, that they would take on for the next uh, several years and several albums. And then they get the driving drumming of Jim Gordon, one of the great rock drummers with one of the best grooves in rock and roll in the 1970s, played with Derek and the Dominoes, played with Delaney and Bonnie, played with Traffic, had a great groove. Uh, there's a book coming out uh, by Joel Selvin on the life of, of Jim Gordon and the tragedy uh, that came about 
that he created and his mental illness and uh, the tragic death of his mother uh, that you might want to check out. Um, I want to read that book when it comes out in the next month or so. But and here you have a menu of the track listing. You have Medicated Goo. You have the Dave Mason Sad and Deep as You from his solo record. 40,000 Headmen and Shouldn't Have Took More Than You Gave, another uh, from the solo album of Dave Mason. So they mix the solo stuff, they mix the traffic stuff. And side two is two songs, extended songs, a great version of Dear Mr. Fantasy, and then a great version of Give Me uh, Some Lovin', again, with that driving drumming of uh, Jim Gordon, and the percussion is separate from the drumming is Jim Capaldi. But um, this is an interesting album. This is a cheap album to get, I think. So uh, check it out. Welcome to the canteen. Then we go into a different phase of traffic. I kind of call, call these the cut corners. This is cut corner before they were cut corner and, and became remainders and cutouts and overpressings. Um, they did two records in a row with this kind of slided cover design. First, obviously, we're doing a little kind of a, you know, 2D, 3D visualization, almost like an Escher, Escher uh, cover thing. This is the Low Spark of High Heel Boys. I love this record. And this became a different vision. Again, I prefer the earlier period, the psychedelic, the, the shorter songs, the writing of both Winwood and Capaldi and Dave Mason. But this is where Rebop Quacklebaugh became a uh, permanent member of the band. You got Rick Gretsch on here again, and you got, of course, um, the driving drumming, drumming there of Jim Gordon as well. But six songs, long songs, hidden treasures, the low spark of high heel po boys, 12 minutes is the centerpiece here that has this great piano riff and bass riff. And it's kind of a, a soulful, jazzy, lingering piece of music. It bored the hell out of some people, but I think this is a record. And it actually did really well in America. The, the problem is this period of traffic did much better in the States than it did in the UK. They kind of didn't get the success they got here. Musically, sound-wise, I don't know. Uh, the singles weren't really great for AM radio. These were FM radio, at least what we have in the States. So this record got a lot of FM play. And this is a period of time where I got interested again. And then I saw them. I saw them on this tour. Another cut copy. Oh, look what I found in my copy. Joel Selvin's review of the show that I saw. Saturday, January 27th, 1973. Traffic has grown larger and also better. Thank you, Joel Selvin. And he has written that book that's coming out on Jim Gordon. What a, I just noticed this, wow. I say this, this is my copy from, I got an import 53 years ago. This is actually a UK island copy uh, when it came out. I'll read the review after, offline. I'm also gonna cut away here. I took some pictures. I was bringing my camera to Winterland and this was great because this was billed as an island show, island record show. Opening act was John Martin, the folky jazz artist. The middle band was free with Paul Rogers. Obviously later he would uh, start out in uh, the band Bad Company. And then of course, traffic, this period of traffic. Now gone is uh, Jim Gordon. We have on this record, some of again, the Memphis, people, the Muscle Shows people, I guess. Uh, we have David Hood and Barry Beckett. Interesting record. Again, doesn't work as good as uh, the previous one from my point of view. But then they do something very different um, only a year later, I believe, in 74 or 75, 74. And this is When the Eagle Flies. I like this album better than the previous album, especially One Cut. One Cut to me is this perfect cut and it starts off side two and it's called Walking in the Wind and it has this great repetitive piano riff. The song fades in. Again, six minute, 48 seconds. I think that some people who had a trouble with traffic around this period didn't like these extended songs. They were sort of light jams. You know, the whole jazz fusion thing that was happening on the jazz side, jazz rock fusion, it wasn't what these guys were doing. You know, some compare it to a certain kind of progressive sound. Now it's not prog rock, obviously, but Traffic definitely had a progressive um, 
DNA in, in their music and their recording. Prog fans are gonna have nothing to do with that comment here, but take away the shortness of prog and call it progressive. Traffic was a progressive band mixing rock, folk, rock and roll, and jazz. And I like most of this record. There's a couple tracks that are weak, but uh, still, it's an interesting record. And then lastly, I'll just show this record, which again, you can get cheap. This is a UK again, an island uh, copy. Um, Chris Blackwell, of course, the head of Island, worked with them quite a bit around this period of time. This is the show I saw, and listening to this again, I haven't heard this in a number of years, I realize how I think I would enjoy this better in this venue, in Winterland, uh, than on record, because they do kind of go on with these, you know, one might call it lightweight jam sounds, although I really like Chris Wood's flute playing, his sax playing too, but I really like his flute playing. I'm a fan of the flute on, in rock and roll, and there's a, a jazzy side of it, the kind of loungy side. I'm not saying it's it's sappy at all, but I just love this. There's a song that I think uh, was perfect where a lot of reviewers around this tour that didn't like the previous album. There's a song on that they did called Sometimes I Feel So Uninspired. And of course, critics who didn't like them at this point would use their own line against them. Sometimes this record feels so uninspired. And, and I can understand where they're coming from on that. Of course, shoot out the Fantasy Factory and side four, the entire side four is Low Spark of High Heel Boys, which is a really great version of it. So I do like this record. I like the sound of this record. I think uh, Steve Winwood is an important artist uh, in the whole realm of rock and roll and very important and very influential. And um, there are people that, you know, got oversaturated with that 80s MTV thing with his hits. But those albums, they have a, a little bit of the 80s sound to them, but not as bad as some other artists. And they were just really powerful, you know, funky soul, get off your ass records. And so uh, that's my take on Traffic. Love this band. I still love this band. And I think they don't get um, anywhere near uh, the due that they deserve. So thanks for watching. And see you next time. Mazzy loves you.